Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, there's a difference between replicas and counterfeits, all right? Um, there are a lot of modern day replicas out there that are designed just to show you exactly what the notes were like back in the day, but they don't try to pass themselves off as original. In fact, a lot of the replicas will be two-sided, or uh, will be one-sided. You'll have to have two pieces of paper, you know, back-to-back -back in order to get the front and the back of the note. Other times, the back of the note was used for advertising purposes. Um, so, generally with replicas, like I said, they weren't put out to try to fool anybody. So, usually the quality isn't that good. But a counterfeit, well, that's a little different. That was intentionally put out to spend, uh, whether it be just your standard criminal or whether it be one government versus the other. Uh, so when you're looking at the difference between replicas and counterfeits, well, that's the, that's the big difference. Like I said, most of your replicas are going to be very cheap. They're going to be on flimsy paper. And the counterfeits, well... You're gonna have to look a little closer, and I'll I'll show you some of the stuff that I I've learned over the over the years with counterfeits. Anyway, <clears throat> I've got my thousand in singles. We are still going through Vegas money. These came from uh, two of these came from the Link, one from Flamingo, the Cromwell Circus Circus, Caesars, Harris, Harris that is, and then Paris. Harris and Paris tend to run together. The Mirage and Treasure Island. That's where these notes came from. So let's see what I found this week. Starting off, uh, I found a birthday note. It's in the wrong order, but it's uh, 1959. That would be February 10th or October 2nd, either way, right? Uh, if that was your birthday, I'm sure you'd be happy to have this, even though it's technically not in the right order. I know if it was my birthday, even in the wrong order like that, I would be excited about it. Uh, trinaries, threes, sixes, and eights, and zeros, fives, and sixes on this one. Zeros, fives, and nines. Zeros, ones, and sevens. Threes, sixes, and nines. Fours, sevens, and eights. And this is twos, sevens, and eights. Twos, fours, and sevens. Some quads. Quad twos. Really nice shape on that one. Quad threes. Quad threes. And once again, there is no additional value for quads. And if you've seen one of my other scammer videos, uh, if quads aren't worth anything, then three of a kind certainly are not worth anything. Quad fives. I save these trying to pair notes with the same serial number. Quad sixes. Quad sevens. That was cl really close to a, a radar there. Eight, nine, seven, 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 nine. Needed that last one to be an eight. Oh, well. Still just quads. Quad sevens again. And some stars. 2021 star note. Checking to see if they are filled. They are not. 2017 A star. Now this one, 2017, uh, it's a fairly low number starting with three, uh, three zeros like that. This one came from Caesar's Palace, if I'm if I remember correctly. Is it was it Caesar's? Let's take a peek. Uh no, this one came from Circus Circus. Circus Circus gave me the three zeros star. So yeah, that's if that's a regular number, that's 21,175. Generally, you don't want the 21,000. You just want 175. That, then it's worth something. But being a lower number, it has a chance to be a rare note because not all low no numbers are rare, but many of the rares are low numbers, if that makes sense. 2013... And then, oh, why did I have this one here? Oh, this is just, this is a 2021. I had a couple 2021s that I wanted to check against my book to see if they upgrade. Uh, 2017A, also in really good shape, so I wanted to check that against my book. Now, the older notes, 2003A, another 2003A. That one's in better condition. 2003A, not quite as nice. And I was just looking, because it looked like it was a trinary, but it's not. There's four different digits there. Another 2003A, another one, 2003, that one's rough shape, and this is marker, 
There are going to be people screaming, oh, that's an error, that's an error. No, it's not an error. Oh, it's an ink stain. Look, it's green ink. No, it's green marker. Big difference. In fact, if I flip it over, let's see if it goes through. Oh, yeah. In fact, it looks like it was done on the back and bled through onto the front. That's a marker. <laughs> Not worth anything. Uh, 2003, 2001, 1999, 1995, not a web note. Another 95, also not a web note. Another 95, not a web note. It's got rust staining here. 1990, er, 1988A, still not a web note. Another 1988A, not a web note. And for those of you that were wondering, what did I find? I finally got something in a case. I found a binary. 855-855-58. This came from Caesars. Uh, so Caesars Palace was good to me. Uh, once again, a note like this. Someone is going to say, oh, it's an error. It's off cut. No, as long as the cut does not go into the ink. It's not an error. In fact, it probably grades, it's probably worth less because it's off center. And if you look real close at the five, there's a little bit of inking there that's a problem. So what? Not worth anything extra there. But yeah, that's the one that came in, that uh, made it into a case from this particular hunt. Five, eight binary. All right. So what did I bring out this week? Well, I got another counterfeit. And this is a contemporary counterfeit uh, from the Confederate States of America. This is the Type 31 $5 note. You can see here, September 2nd, 1861. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out that lets you know it's counterfeit to start with is look at the numbers. Those numbers are not handwritten. They're, they look like they're supposed to be handwritten. But I don't know of a font that would be that way. <laughs> uh, so these are these are supposed to be handwritten numbers. They are clearly not. They are printed. The signatures are also supposed to be real. And they too are clearly printed. Um, so we know right away this is counterfeit. Now aside from the, the stuff that's supposed to be in writing on here, look at the lack of detail in the figure. I mean, there's there's none. There's no detail at all in that figure. Look at the the background of the five. It just looks like a bunch of concentric lines. There's no design there. There's supposed to be some type of design. And you can see here. Look at their faces. How they're just there's no detail at all. Once again, on this side, yeah, that's that's pretty rough. So this is most certainly a counterfeit. And it looks like it's got a slight little crease here. It looks like it's got a little crease here. So it's seen seen a little bit of stuff, but overall it's actually it's actually pretty good. <laughs> now, a $5 type 31. I want to scoot this out of the way and I want to show you something here. This is collecting Confederate paper money, the field edition 2014. This was put out by Pierre Frick. What an amazing book. Okay, uh, I have this note and my note isn't this color. So the first thing I did was go and check why this one is this color. And it turns out that they actually had a red and a pink and almost an orange color with these notes. So, yeah, when I first saw this cover, I'm like, did I actually buy a counterfeit? No, 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 mine's legit. But anyway, this note covers anything and everything about Confederate currency, and uh, it's a thick book. <laughs> but let me show you what we got in here. All right. Type 31, $5 dated September 2nd, 1881. There's the real one on top. And they are kind enough to show the contemporary counterfeit. And that's exactly what I've got. And it says crude woodcut. Sometimes uh, the counterfeit 31 is missing New Orleans uh, right here. You can see that. And on mine, mine has that, I believe. Yes, it does. There it is. New Orleans is on this one, but on a lot of them it's missing. And what else? Uh, and the right C 
uh, okay. Uh, this one has the full upham imprint in the lower margin. And mine, on the lower margin, does not have any printing at all. Versus this one here, you can see all the fine printing there. So this one is technically a better counterfeit than the one that I have. But here's an interesting thing. See the number? 364. What was the serial number on mine? 364. Same thing. Now, once again, when we look at the pictures, you can see how there's no detail there. Versus up top, where there's a lot more detail in the face. There's a lot more detail in those faces there. And look at the signatures. See how the ink is a different color than the printing? Especially here. You can see this signature versus September. Definitely two different color inks. And these are definitely two different inks in and of themselves compared to what they have here on the bottom. So, yeah, those are some really good ways to tell counterfeits. Oh, and while I got it here, contemporary counterfeit. Um, these still hold value. Um, mine is probably in the 150 range, I'd say, with the condition that it's in. It's it's pretty nice compared to, of course, if it was real, it would be almost 10 times that. <laughs> but anyway, that is my contemporary counterfeit from the Confederate States of America, T31. If you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.